Hey, wait, no. Camera's right there. I don't know why I made that mistake. But... Okay. Hey, what's going on, guys? I am the Mystical Green Beanie, and in today's video, I'm going to pitch you a Superman game. This is a Superman game that I would make if I was in charge of anything beyond my own destiny. Well, I mean, that's if anyone's in charge of their own destiny. And if you've been subscribed for long enough, you're probably thinking to yourself, Deja vu. And you're not wrong? Uh, so, the reason I'm redoing this video is because I went back and rewatched my first Superman video game pitch, and that video is awful. The audio quality is terrible, the editing is terrible, I'm not really being clear what I'm talking about. I don't know, the story, and the gameplay, and the atmosphere, and a lot of the gameplay contradicts what I was talking about with the actual control scheme of the game. So yeah, I'm just going to redo that video here, and hopefully you enjoy it. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Starting with the controls, uh, we're going to be going off of the PS4 template because that is the latest, greatest system that I own because I am poor. Side note, if anybody knows of any sexy single ladies or sexy married ladies, particularly of the rich, disillusioned cougar variety, your boy could really use a sugar mama right now, things are tough, links to my social media are in the description below, and my DMs are always open. That's totally not a plug for my social media. Wait, uh, wait, 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 I already lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, right. Uh, pressing R1 will allow you to perform light attacks or attack enemies with weapons that you've grabbed from the environment. Meanwhile, R2 is for performing heavy attacks and throwing objects that you, once again, have grabbed from the environment. L2 is your aiming button, and in order to speed dash and accelerate your speed while running or flying, you press L1. And moving Superman around both on the ground and in the air is as simple as toggling the L3 bumper. Meanwhile, you can control the camera, Superman's aim, and his flight direction with the R3 bumper. Square is for completely obliterating anything and everything in your path with your heat vision, unless you want to look through walls, which in case the square button also doubles for x-ray vision. As for freeze breath and your super breath, both projectile attacks are triggered with triangle, and you can interact with your environment by pressing circle. Jumping and ascending into the air for flight are accomplished by pressing X, However, for ascending into the air for flight, you tap X a second time while in the air, and for a dramatic takeoff, you press and hold X down and release to shoot into the sky. Uh, you can switch between your super breath and your freeze breath by pressing left on the D-pad. You can also switch between your heat vision and your x-ray vision by pressing right on the D-pad. And finally, pressing the touchpad on the PS4 controller will activate your map, this way you can it's a map, you know what a map is, whatever. Anyways, on to combat. Uh, basically, it's a God of War 4 clone with flying mechanics. Also, Superman isn't a great fighter. And I'll talk about this more in a minute, but this is a very young Superman. And the rationale behind him not being a great fighter is that he, he's Superman. You know, the dude is... 25 years old and hasn't had to physically fight a day in his life. So now that the threat level has risen and there are people who can finally step to him, he's taken off guard a little bit. So when he's fighting enemies, he doesn't look cool or graceful like Batman does in the Arkham games. And when he performs finishers, they don't look like the super moves that Superman can do in Injustice, where he's very polished and graceful. If anything, he looks like Nathan Drake if Nathan Drake had superpowers. Oh, better example. Uh, you notice how in Spider-Man Miles Morales, when compared to Peter, uh, Miles looks kind of like a klutz, but he still feels like Spider-Man. That's what I would be going for. His fighting feels very raw and unrefined, but he still feels like Superman. And when he punches something, there is hard impact, and you really feel the weight of that punch or kick. But, you know, it, it's that thing where, you know, if he wasn't the most powerful being in the universe, he'd be getting curb stomped by, like, random assholes in body armor and mech suits. And that brings me to my next point. 
The reason Superman can fight random thugs in this game is because enemies in this game are either outfitted with anti-metahuman technology, or they're biologically enhanced. Or both. That way, combat is engaging. You know, and as much as I like Undefeated as a superhero power fantasy concept, it's a fun, free-to-play game. But if this were a $60 AAA game, I cannot imagine I would be too thrilled. A Superman game should have dynamic action, and there should be some difficulty. That's why I would like this to be a little more engaging and technical. You know, I want the players to feel super powerful, but I also want them to be on their toes. That's why this game would have an in-depth beat-em-up combat system with over-the-shoulder shooter mechanics, and the combat would be combo-based. And if you can keep an unbroken combo going, your attacks become more powerful, very much like the free-flow combat system in the Arkham games. And the more powerful your attacks become, the more frequent you are with powerful attacks, and the more XP you gain from that combo, and the faster you can earn upgrades for Superman. Finishers can be performed by pressing triangle and circle, like literally every action beat-em-up game that's come out the past 10 years. And again, they're not graceful. This is a Superman who can scrap, but he mostly relies on his powers. So finishers look a lot like Henry Cavill Superman's finishing moves, because that is also a Superman who is very young, who is also a very poor fighter. Meanwhile, using circle, your environmental button, uh, you can pick up cars, rip up street signs, parking meters, trash cans, tanks, etc, etc, and you can either throw them at enemies, which is like a crowd clearing tactic, or useful for taking down big enemies or fighting bosses, and you can do that by pressing R2, or you can press R1 and use objects as weapons and just beat the living shit out of people. This game would also have a counter system, and that counter system would be strike based. Uh, you can counter enemy attacks by parrying them. Uh, some attacks you won't be able to counter though. So there will be moments where you have to make use of that dash button, and in order to dash, you simply tap L1. And of course, with this being a Superman game, there would be flying combat. And flying combat will consist of dogfights between jetpack enemies, flying enemies, and military drone helicopters. I should note, aiming is more of a lock-on system akin to the lock-on system from the Devil May Cry series, or Dark Souls, or Jedi Fallen Order. When you're aiming, you are locked onto a target, and you can toggle targets with your R3 bumper. And the reason for that being is because when you're fighting enemies in the sky, it's chaos. It's kind of like Dragon Ball Z Kakarot in that way, and much like Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, if you're fighting an enemy in the air and you're not locked onto that target, you're just not going to have a good time. There's also a solar meter, and I brought this up in my last pitch for a Superman game, and I still stand by it. It worked in Superman Shadow of Apocalypse, and it's an idea that everybody who pitches Superman games consistently brings up, so I think it works. It would rest just below the health bar, and it's the only real handicap that you're given in the game, and even then, it's not that big of a handicap, all it does is limit your projectile abilities and your super speed, uh, but your flight and your strength aren't really affected by it. Plus, your solar meter will recharge, and recharge times will get faster each time you upgrade the mechanic. Oh, and there would also be a collateral damage mechanic, where you can rescue civilians who are in harm's way or who've been hurt, similar to Spider-Man Web of Shadows. Here, say if somebody throws a car at your face and you press L1 and you dash out of the way and the building behind you gets hit. Your super hearing will detect somebody crying out for help and you can press L2 to pinpoint and locate civilians. Aiming slows down time temporarily so you'll be able to find them very quickly and press the environmental interaction button circle and grab civilians who are in danger and take them away from said danger. Okay, so something that I forgot to mention, uh, when you're in a combat scenario, uh, there will be enemies who throw objects at you. Some of those objects are cars. Uh, and there would be a mini game mechanic where some of those cars will have uh, a blue aura around them and some of them will have a red aura around them. Uh, cars that are highlighted red are empty. Uh, you can either get out of the way by pressing L1 or you can counter the attack uh, by using your freeze breath, your super breath, 
your heat vision, uh, you can punch the car, or you can press circle, grabbing it, and that will give you the option of smashing somebody with it or throwing it back. And I could have phrased that better, because now all I can think about is Superman bent over in a fanboy Hooters outfit throwing it back for John Peters while Kevin Smith narrates the whole thing. <sighs> However, if the car is highlighted blue, that means somebody is in that car. So instead of going full on in Justice Gods Among Us, where Superman just heat visions the shit out of living people to save himself from catching some smoke, you have to press circle to catch the oncoming vehicle and press circle for a second time to set the car down safely. Now getting into the game's setting, uh, this would be an open world game. Uh, Metropolis is the setting for the game. Obviously it's a Superman game, why would you not set into Metropolis? And Metropolis is a massive open world environment. Uh, the game takes place primarily in New Troy, which is like the Metropolis version of New York's Manhattan. Although, there's a part of the map that's a ghetto called Suicide Slum. I shit you not, that is actually a neighborhood from the comics, look it up. Uh, and there are two bridges that take you there. Although, you're Superman, you, you can just fly over them. I don't know why I brought up the two bridges thing. Uh, but imagine if Harlem from Spider-Man PS4 was disconnected from the rest of Manhattan and looked a lot like the historic district from the first Infamous game. That's what Suicide Slum is like. But I'll talk more about that district when I get to the story. Uh, but there would also be a part of the map called the Wild Area. And it's basically this forest-like environment that takes you beneath New Troy and you find an entire lost civilization that makes up yeah, roughly 20 to 25 percent of the main regular map. As for buildings that you can walk around in, ah, there's not a lot. Uh, it's kind of like Spider-Man PS4 in the sense that you're mostly using the city as your playground, but there would still be some buildings here and there that you can go inside. Uh, you can enter the Daily Planet, Clark Kent's apartment, and the Ace of Clubs bar. But many of the buildings that you enter that aren't those three locations will be specific to where you are in the campaign or challenge maps, like gang hideouts, terrorist cells, military bases, uh, LexCorp Tower, during a mission as Clark where you're running a story on Lex Luthor, and you know, a few places like that in this game. That will never exist. And this is probably something that's stupid to mention, but I see a lot of video game pitches omit this, and they say it's a power scaling thing. I don't necessarily agree. I think that you can have Superman fly in a Superman game. Why else would you buy a Superman game? That's like having a Spider-Man game where you can't swing around the city. What's the point? So yeah, Flight would be in this game, and Flight would work very similarly to Anthem or the Avengers. The only limitation to your flight would be your speed. Uh, this would be part of the limitations from your solar meter, uh, but unlike Anthem, you won't burn out, uh, you will be able to fly continuously, but you won't be able to continuously spam super speed unless you have that suit power unlocked. Again, don't worry, I'll get to that later. Uh, but in order to access your supersonic speeds, all you gotta do is press and hold the L1 bumper. And again, aiming slows down time, so you'll be able to make sharp turns between buildings when you're flying super fast. And when you're not in a combat situation, you can make some sharp turns between buildings without having to worry about accidentally locking on to something in the environment, because lock-on would only really kick in when you're in a combat situation. That way, you don't lock on to, like, a window or a sign and go full 9-11 and just crash into it because it was in the environment and obviously it locks onto it. No, that's that wouldn't be a problem in this game. Or at least I hope it wouldn't be a problem in this game. I don't know, it doesn't exist. I don't I, I can't make it happen. Anyways, uh last thing I talk about before I get to the story, uh there would also be a super hearing mechanic that would alert Superman to activities in the open world where he can hear somebody that's in danger, or he can hear a conflict that's happening, and this would kick off new missions and set up side missions for him to investigate and deal with. Now, finally, on to the story. Uh, this would be an early year Superman story, inspired by Grant Morrison and Rags Morales' New 52 Action Comics series, Jeff Johns and Gary Frank's Superman Secret Origin, Mark Wade and Lionel Francis use Superman Birthright, John Byrne's Man of Steel, and Superman American Alien by Max Landis, Nick Dragota, Tommy Lee Edwards, Joel Jones, Jay Lee, Francis Manipal, Jonathan Case, and Jacques. Crap, 
Christ, that's a lot of names. And the game's aesthetic would be very... unconventional, to say the least. Uh, imagine Sunset Overdrive meets Infamous Second Son meets DMC Devil May Cry meets Superman. I know that's probably not an easy concept to uh, wrap your brain around, but basically what I'm going for is punk rock Superman. Uh, and I know that at first glance that's counter to everything that the character is and should be, but here's my train of thought. I am a simp for Golden Age Superman. I love the concept of Superman versus the Elite, but not the comic and not that movie, but that's a video for another day. Uh, when I say the Elite, I mean the establishment, the system, the 1%, Superman versus capitalism gone wrong. And I think making Superman a punk rock type character is not only fitting, all you're really doing is taking what's already been established with the character and just leaning into it a little bit. Okay, so I am in the process of editing and I've noticed that we are already at the 18 minute mark and there's like 30 more minutes of content to edit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version of the Cliff Notes version of my story. So. Superman is roughly 23, 24 years old in this game, and he's been Superman for about a year and a half. And this would be to Superman what Arkham Origins was to Batman. Like, Arkham Origins is an origin story, but not in the sense that it's following Bruce's journey to becoming Batman, but more so in the sense that it's following Batman's journey in becoming the legendary Dark Knight. Batman. That's what I'm doing here. Superman's already established, but this isn't a story about Clark's journey to becoming Superman. He's already Superman. Now, this is his crucible. The events that play out in this game would show you just how Superman went from the scrappy champion of the oppressed to the Man of Steel Superman. And Clark is a bit of a himbo? Uh, he's a bit of a jackass. Like, he's a genius because he's the biological son of one of the most scientifically profound minds in the DC Universe, but common sense is not his thing. But honestly, what can you expect from a guy who can punch mountains out of existence, fly at the speed of sound, and audiovisually interact with the entirety of the electromagnetic spectrum, and make it his life's ambition to inspire the world by punching its problems while wearing a onesie with his underwear on the outside. And this game's narrative would explore his philosophy and make him question whether or not truth, justice, the American way, let's hold hands I promise it's not gay, actually works? Or is it just a nice sentiment to write down on a sheet of paper? The game would also delve into Clark's insecurities with being an alien, and not knowing where he comes from or why he was sent to Earth, and Superman, in a way, is Clark coping with those insecurities, because he wants to give his life meaning and make meaning where there honestly might not be any. This game would also explore his relationships with other characters like Lois Lane, Perry White, Jimmy Olsen, and Lex Luthor, both as Clark Kent and Superman, respectively. And this game would be incredibly narrative-driven in the same way that the Uncharted games are narrative-driven, and in the same way that the Infamous games were narrative-driven, and in the same way that Spider-Man PS4 is the best Spider-Man movie never made, I want this to be the best Superman movie never made. Metropolis is the setting, obviously, it's a Superman game, what the fuck else you gonna set the game? Goddamn Pub City, Jesus Christ. And Metropolis in this is this shining, glimmering, art deco dystopia. It's grossly corrupt, but not in the way that Gotham is corrupt. See, Gotham is screwed up because it's a city run by the mob and crime families like the Falcones, the Maronis, 
and the Cobblepots. No, the problem with Metropolis is corporate crime. It's a city that's more or less run by private outfits, like local politicians still exist, but they're glorified figureheads and everyone knows it, but they're just too powerless to do anything about it. There's also a huge problem with wealth disparity. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, the game is set in New Troy, which is like the metropolis that everyone has in their head when they think of metropolis. But there's also this ghetto that's literally called Suicide Slum. It's like, if somebody says, yeah, I'm from Chicago, and you're thinking, oh, okay, the Sears Tower, Navy Pier, uh, the Giant Bean, yeah, it's a beautiful city, it's a very pretty city. And they're like, nah, fam, I'm from West Garfield Park. That's Metropolis in this game. Living there is nice. If you're rich, if you're poor, it sucks. And as a result, violent crime is a big issue. Gangs like the 100, the Royal Flush Gang, and Enter Gang are a big problem. But there's also terrorism from anti-capitalist and anti-establishment extremist cults like the Battalion of Doom, Locus, and the Outsiders. And I want to talk about the Outsiders for a second. Uh, the Outsiders are a weird case. They're this cult of techno hippies who worship these angelic aliens and claim that demons from a higher dimension are trying to take over the world using the tools of capitalist society to push this metaphysical war of good and evil in their favor. But obviously they're crazy, so whatever, just punch them. God, this video's so long. Okay, so in making a long story short, in the year that Clark has been Superman, it started out with small stuff, like saving cats from trees, responding to house fires, you know, that sort of thing. And then that escalated into fighting crime, responding to stolen vehicles, B&Es, robberies, and very recently, he started going after bigger fish, like Bernie Madoff's and Jeffrey Epstein's, you know, big fish who once thought themselves untouchable, are now being dragged out of their penthouses, publicly humiliated in the middle of city streets, and forced to confess to their crimes by this jackass in a onesie with a cape. This is obviously a big problem. Not for poor people. Poor people fucking love Superman. No, this is a problem for corporate America. For the first time in forever, Corporate criminals and criminals of a wealthy disposition no longer feel safe. But do you want to know who's even more scared of Superman than Metropolis' financial district? The United States government. See, from their perspective, this guy, this Superman, shows up. He can fly at supersonic speeds. He can shoot lasers out of his face and he can crush cars like they were made of paper mache. And he's upsetting the social political landscape in a major way really fast. But what if he's not the only one? What if one of these supermen, these meta-humans, popped up in Keystone City, or Gotham, or the nation's capital Washington DC. Hell, never mind the potential dangers domestically, what would happen if one of these metahumans showed up in a hot zone like Syria or Kondok? No, 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 no. This has to be nipped in the bud right here, right now. So the US government offers a major weapons contract deal with anyone who can design anything that can feasibly kill Superman or any metahumans of his ilk. So companies like Amertech, Glen Glen Morgan Enterprises, Stag Industries, Savannah Industries, and a bunch of others put their R&D departments into overdrive, building weapons to kill Superman. And through Intergang, 
have their products sold on the black market to criminal organizations like the Royal Flush Gang and the 100. Sometimes some of their product is stolen by the Battalion of Doom or Locust or the Outsiders and Superman has to deal with these problems all while Uncle Sam gets a front row seat to see just how well these products do in the field. So basically this game is Superman vs. the Military Industrial Complex with the help of Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, Harry White, and Lex Luthor. All allies in your quest to save the world from itself. And if you really want me to, I can totally get into the story for this game because not to self-indulge here or anything like that, suck suck, I think I made a pretty solid story concept. I just don't want to get into it here because this video is already long as fuck. As for boss battles, there would be several boss battles in the game, uh, both in the main campaign and inside missions. Campaign bosses include Master Jailer, Neutron, Bloodsport, Equus, the Forearm Terror, Metallo, twice technically because you fight Metallo as Metallo, but then you fight him when he's being corrupted by Brainiac. Oh, and then there's also Brainiac, who's the big bad villain of the game. As for the side quest bosses, they would include Jimmy Olsen as a DNA alien, because of course Jimmy Olsen turns into a giant monster and you have to fight him because that's just a Jimmy Olsen thing. Toy Man, Livewire, Prankster, Parasite, Titano, Bruno Mannheim, and the Helgramite. And on the topic of side quest, uh, there would be Mixius Pitalik challenges in the form of combat challenges and races. There would also be hideout raids for various gangs, criminal organizations, and terrorist outfits very similar to Spider-Man PS4 or hideout missions. Except there's no stealth because... Superman. Star Labs challenges would be in the game, and they're basically just more combat and race challenges. Uh, and there would be civilians who bring up matters that require your help, like saving people from burning buildings, stopping people from committing suicide, car accidents, saving cats from trees, you know, that sort of stuff. Finally, I wanted to bring up the costume options. Uh, I'm thinking I would keep it relatively small because the reality is Superman doesn't have a lot of costume variety like, say, Batman or Iron Man. But here, uh, I want to highlight various eras of Superman's history and pull from material that's thematically relevant to the game's narrative, uh, which is kind of what Brian Intihar was saying he was doing with uh, Spider-Man PS4. Uh, there would be a variation on the classic suit, which would be the default costume for the game. Uh, it's a suit that Clark designed with his mother. There would also be the Kryptonian suit. Uh, it's a costume that Clark finds while on board Berniak's ship just before the final battle. And the suit would be like, uh, it's a symbolic message that Clark has fully embraced the fact that he's just as much a man of Earth as he is an alien. I would also incorporate the solar suit from All-Star Superman. Uh, this costume has a suit power that allows your solar meter to remain full. Uh, the Flashpoint suit would also be featured in this game. Uh, and this costume would have the suit power that makes you more resilient to metahuman melee attacks. The Golden Age costume would be present, uh, and this costume suit power elevates your melee damage. The Godfall costume would be here as well. Uh, this suit power would increase your... thing? I don't know. S so comment below what you think the Godfall costume can do. I don't know. It just increases your whatever. Uh, the New 52 costume makes you immune to kryptonite damage. Uh, there would also be the New 52 Action Comics costume by Rags Morales. Uh, and this would be a story costume, so it doesn't really have a suit power. But yeah, uh, those are just some of the costumes that are in the game, and all of them offer you some type of perk by heightening the stats of your abilities. And much like Spider-Man PS4, suit abilities can be switched out with other suits if you like. And there you have it. That is my Superman game. What did you think? I know the video's a little long in the tooth, but hopefully you enjoyed it nonetheless. Anyways, I have a question for you now. Uh, who do you think would be a good developer for this game? Or a Superman game in general? Personally, I really think that Santa Monica Studios would make a great Superman game. 
they're the developing house behind God of War 4. If you couldn't tell, I really, really was inspired by God of War 4 when planning this game. I also think that Volition would make a great Superman game. Uh, they're the studio behind the Saints Row series. Uh, I mean, hell, Saints Row 4 is literally just a Superman game. With dildos. Ooh, uh, Ninja Theory. They'd make an amazing Superman game. And if you don't know who Ninja Theory is, uh, they're the developing house behind DMC Devil May Cry, the reboot, which is personally my second favorite game in that franchise. Heresy. But yeah, let me know down below in the comment section who do you think would make an amazing Superman game? What would you do if you were in charge of making a Superman game? Also, if you like this video, hit that like button, share, support the channel, and if you want to see more content like this, all you have to do is subscribe. I'm the Mystical Green Beanie, thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, adios nachos, adios.